Hey guys, Saker here. And today we'll be showing a silly old Soviet submarine why he can't simply surface safely in stormy Scandinavian seas. That was a lot of asses. Anyway, let's get into it. To accomplish the mission today, I'm going to be demonstrating three things that the Vigan can do using uh, its systems on board. We're going to be using its terrain avoidance capabilities as well as its time on target, and its ability to find and land on a road base in these kinds of uh, low visibility conditions. So a Soviet whiskey submarine has trespassed into Scandinavian waters, and the Norwegians want to use this incursion as a way to show off their new P-3 Orion anti-submarine warfare plane. As such, they've insisted on being the first people to the target area. They did not, however, say anything about us getting to the target at the same time as them, so we're going to flex on that with that capability today. Alright, so the CK-37 computer is on, and we're going to load the cartridge in the same way as always. Our mission code. And put it into our takeoff area. First things first, I know that waypoint 7 is our target area. Currently it's listed as B7, a navigation waypoint. We need to change that. Flip this dial over to tact. Input. 9 and waypoint 7. And you can see here now that B7 has changed to attack waypoint M7. That is correct. Back to output. The next thing we need to do here is set up the CK37 to bring us to our attack point 7 at precisely the same time as that P3 Orion. We know that he's going to be intercept intercepting the submarine at exactly 8.15 a.m. local time. That's 8.15 and 0 seconds, so over to TID to code in the time on target. Input 0, 0.8.15 and 0 seconds. So the input there is 0, 0.8.15 followed by two zeros. Back over to waypoint 7. And if we switch everything back to output and reselect our takeoff waypoint, then go back to our time on target we'll see here a countdown timer that depicts in number of seconds our time until takeoff. So now we wait. We'll go ahead and taxi up to the beginning of our runway. You can just barely make it out through the rain, but the beginning of the runway is marked by uh, the patented IKEA flag and a tire. It's an uphill, so we need a little bit of power to get rolling here. And we have about 205 seconds left to go until takeoff. Subtitle Sager. You got anything funny to say while we wait? Ha! <laughs> Classic. So we're here at this road base in a storm uh, where Viggins often found themselves. I have to admit though, this road base was chosen a bit hastily. So as such, the takeoff is a bit sketchy and some pilotage will definitely be required. I'm gonna give myself a little extra room just to accelerate around this corner as we take off. 113 seconds to go. My goal with this video is to demonstrate some of the skills that might be required in uh, an upcoming Spud Spud's Vigan mission. If you want to learn more about the Vigan and get more Vigan tutorials, let me know in the comments below. The link to the Discord will also be in the description. In the description I'll also probably include, if I'm intelligent, links to, links to uh, Chuck's guide as well as the Vigan kneeboard pages. that help with setting the aircraft up so that you don't have to memorize all of the CK-37 codes because they're a pain to memorize.
20 seconds to go. Switch this to nav. And if anyone knows <laughs> how to get proper takeoff symbology from a road base like this, please let me know in the comments below. I haven't been able to figure it out, and I'd really like to know my rotate speed when I'm taking off from a base like this. Anyway, timer hit zero, so away we go. Just using a combination of rudder as well as roll to keep us centered on this runway. <laughs> that wasn't so bad, was it? Alrighty. We're getting into the soup, so radar on. And obstacle clearance mode on as well. Now in our HUD, you can see that the tail fin on our uh, velocity vector has separated. This means that we're ahead of schedule. Uh, this is because the speed of our leg to waypoint one is always hard fixed at our takeoff speed. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not really quite sure what that speed is. I always thought it was around 550 kilometers an hour, but it might be around 350 kilometers an hour, our takeoff speed. On the terrain avoidance radar, you can see hard ridge lines on either side of me, depicted by those black lines. Uh, th those are sharp changes in gradient that we cannot clear at our current altitude. Ahead of us, you can see that some of the ground has been picked up by the radar, which means that the ground ahead of us is rising to our current cruising altitude, but not so sharply as to denote a ridge line. We're getting quite slow here. So I'm going to accelerate. We have a lot of time to adjust our uh, our schedule and route, and I don't want to get into too slow of a flight in these mountains, just in case I need to pull up. All right, so we've, we're coming along now to waypoint two. The, the speed of this leg is coded, and I've coded it in the mission editor as Mach 0.7. The vertical fin has sunken into our velocity vector now, uh, suggesting that we are behind on the timeline. So we need to accelerate over Mach 0.7 to catch back up. As we cruise, a good habit to get into is to set the QFE of your highest navigation waypoint. In this case, it's waypoint 4 at 818.6. Don't get two heads down in the cockpit at this point like I'm doing. Otherwise, you might fly into the side of a mountain. But I can see on my terrain radar that if I come slightly right, we should be okay for the time being. We're still behind on our timeline, but we have a lot of time to catch up, so I'm not too concerned at this point. What I am concerned about is uh, our visibility dropping severely. Hopefully we can make it through. While the terrain avoidance radar is useful, it can't always be relied upon. So our waypoint three is right there on the edge of that ridge line. Once again, I'm navigating to stay in this valley, and I see that it comes off to the left. I know that waypoint four is off to the left as well, so I'm going to prepare my left-hand turn. And now the timeline is suggesting that we're ahead of schedule. All right, waypoint four is over this ridge line, so we're going to do a pretty sharp climb here, as well as coming left.
The dark lines have faded, suggesting that I'm clear of terrain, but I am keeping an ever watchful eye on the red light that signifies that I am seven seconds from impacting the ground according to my radar altimeter. Now over to waypoint five. The time to target calculation is calculated by the CK-37 as a straight line between waypoints. It assumes that you can make instantaneous adjustments to heading without losing any speed, which is obviously not the case. That's why as I pass from one waypoint to another, you'll see uh, my time to target fluctuating. It's not calculating for the extra distance traveled in the turn, and I fall behind schedule. As such, with every sharp turn, I'll have to speed up to get back on course. And by course, of course, I mean timeline. Alright, so we're through the thick of it. That was some hairy stuff back there. And what we can do now is set our QFE back to standard, because I know it's standard pressure today. I know it's strange in a storm like this. I forgot to change the pressure in the uh, mission editor. And our target is over the water, so that'll be 1013.3. That'll do just fine. Over to waypoint 7. We're just about on time, maybe a hair behind. Our run into the attack waypoint is coded at uh, Mach 0.9. Let's get the plane ready to use its rockets here. And come out of terrain avoidance mode and see if we can see that submarine on radar. There he is, right at the edge of our waypoint. Now he's doing about 12 or 13 knots reported, so I'm not going to adjust this waypoint because if our time on target calculations are correct, we should pass over the submarine at precisely waypoint 7 at the given time. And if all works out, that Norwegian P3 Orion should be there as well. Fifteen kilometers to go. There's the submarine off our 11 o'clock, <laughs> and there's the P3 off our 12. See? You got there first. Now, I don't know, that P3 didn't look too threatening to me. So let's really show that submarine that he's not safe here. I don't want to kill that submarine. I don't want to start a war with Russia. But I do want to let him know that we can take care of him if they d decide to start a war with us. Go 
Oh, track IR freaking out there. Sorry about that. There's the submarine. That could have been you, bud. All right. Now for the next phase of our flight. We need to figure out how to get home in these kinds of conditions. So because we took off from the road base, it should be implemented as our landing waypoint. But DCS doesn't really like road bases that much, so it's a good habit to recode in your landing coordinates. In this case, easting first, of course. So ref Lola input, four, one, three, two, two, four east, took those coordinates. Northern next. Four, three, zero, two, zero, six. And they'll flash here. And you put that in Elmall. We also need to do a, uh, or sorry, we also need to let the Vigan know what bearing we're landing on. And for that, we go to our bearing mode, Banagrons. And the landing bearing today is 056.0 zero zero degrees. So zero, five, six, point zero and put that in Elmall. Let's check our work. Select Elmall. Over to Bonagrans, 56 degrees, as well as our FARP code, in this case, 9022. Let's resume navigation to waypoint eight. That should get us into the right valley and align us up with a straight in approach. And now the Vigan is all configured to do an instrument approach to a road. It's pretty impressive stuff, in my opinion, for a plane this old. Unlike an instrument approach to an airport, where the Vigan would use its full TILS, or Tactical Instrument Landing System, capability, there's no TILS emitter. So there's nothing that will correct the Vigan's navigation drift on final approach. Any error that we build up during the flight, in this case we're currently at one kilometer, will affect our landing position. So we have to take these indications with a grain of salt and figure out exactly what the CK-37 is trying to tell us here. Turn obstacle clearance mode back on. Does the Vigan have any way of telling you whether or not it's an obstacle clearance mode? Uh, no, not really. Oh, we also need to code in our uh, QFE of 970.7. And there we have it. Bump the radar range back down to minimum. I believe that's standard mode, and that looks like obstacle clearance to me. What a beautiful day in Sweden.
Alright. We've now switched to our landing waypoint. We can now switch to our INS mode. And you can see a circle that depicts our landing area, as well as a line that shows our landing bearing. Timeline indications have appeared at the bottom of the HUD, telling us when we'll drop our gear. That'll be at 10 kilometers, it'll be momentarily. And our fin on the velocity vector is now depicting our on speed in the same way that it was depicting our time on target earlier. We're slow. Gear down. Our on speed has now changed to our, uh, around 300 kilometers an hour, our landing speed. Let's go ahead and arm the thrust reverser and drop the HUD glass as we slow down. So the HUD is saying that I need to do a right turn. Can't really do that right now, but I know that I will eventually intercept the glide slope if I continue forward. That line, the straight line, depicts our glide slope there. The HUD indication is also telling me that I'm high, but there is terrain beneath me, so I can't descend too much. I'm now following my HUD left, and hopefully any moment now I'll see the road I'm supposed to land on. I believe the TIL system in this form is only able to take us down to 150 meters accurately. Those are our minimums. Oh, look at that. I have the road in sight. We're very high and we're rather fast. I am going to carry a bit of speed into this landing as we have to flare for an uphill landing. This won't be pretty. Double check. Three, three green on the gear, and the thrust reverser is armed. Not the prettiest of landings, but we did still manage to slow down to our taxi speed before the end of the runway, as depicted by the uh, IKEA patented flag and attire. And now we can just continue our way down this road through the forest to our secret hidden hangars. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys are looking forward to upcoming Vigan missions with the Spuds Buds. I'll see you next time.